So the first piece of equipment we're going to look at is the multimeter. Multimeters are probably one of the most commonly used pieces of equipment because they perform so many different functions. So this here is a bench multimeter and you can also buy handheld meters which are convenient because they're portable and they're also cheaper. The advantage of having a bench multimeter like this one is uh, they're generally more precise, they have more functionality, they're programmable, so you can interface to a computer and have a computer send commands to the multimeter to do things automatically. You can also put them in a test rack if you're in a production environment testing the same piece of electronics over and over again. So some of the most common functions of a multimeter are just simply measuring voltage, current, and resistance. Um, measuring voltage is a parallel measurement, so you'll take probes and put them in parallel with a voltage source like this one here. So if I turn this on, set it to 2.5 volts, and put my probes in parallel, I get 2.5 volts. Current measurements are done similarly, except when you're measuring current, you want to put the multimeter in series with whatever current you're trying to measure. Most multimeters will have a different banana plug for measuring current as opposed to taking voltage measurements. So that's why you see so many different terminals on pretty much every multimeter. When measuring resistance, there's two types of resistance measurements you can make. One is known as a two-wire measurement, and another is known as a four-wire measurement. So a two-wire measurement is just like it sounds. You only need two leads to make a two-wire measurement. So here's a 100 ohm resistor, and we get 100 ohms. Now, two-wire measurements are good for measuring resistances that are much greater than the resistance found in these leads. So these test leads are made of copper wire, and there's some inherent resistance to the copper that's in these leads. So as long as what you're measuring is a lot more than whatever the resistance of these leads are, then you can get an accurate measurement. But if you're trying to measure resistances of, say, less than an ohm, uh, you're just not going to be able to do that because this is going to introduce a large amount of error. So to demonstrate that, this is a 500 micro ohm shunt. And if I were to try to measure that with a two-wire resistance measurement, you're going to see it's reading about 2.5 ohms, which that's not correct. So if I want to measure the resistance of this shunt, I have to do what's called a four-wire measurement. So a four-wire measurement is just like it sounds. You have to use four wires. And the reason for using four wires is that you're going to use two wires to sense the voltage across the resistance. And then you're going to use a separate two wires to source current through that resistance. So by separating the path of current from your sense leads, you don't run into the issue where you're measuring a voltage drop across the leads themselves. So if I put this meter in four-wire mode, we can try to accurately measure this shunt. Now, I'm not sure if you can see this, but in the statistics menu, I'm taking an average of all these readings, and you can see it's about 480 microohms, or about half a milliohm. Another useful feature is what's called diode mode, which allows you to measure the forward voltage of a diode. So this is useful if you're trying to match diodes or um, with LEDs, sometimes it's not always obvious which lead is the anode and cathode. So with through holes, uh, the anode is usually longer than the cathode, but with surface mount LEDs, you don't always know from the polarity markings which is which. So in that case, you can take your leads and place them across the diode. So your red lead or your positive lead, when it's placed on that anode, the LED will light up. So if you're trying to figure that out, See the LED lights up, and the meter displays the forward voltage of that LED. So you can see this blue LED has a forward voltage of 2.63 volts. Now, one thing I've noticed with handheld meters is not every handheld meter can source enough current uh, to actually measure the forward voltage of certain diodes, and particularly LEDs. So with LEDs, um, as you go up the spectrum of frequency, um, like so red is a lower frequency than blue since blue light is higher energy There's going to be a higher forward voltage and not every meter can source enough current to 
hit that forward voltage. So in the case of the flukes, every fluke I've used has been able to source enough current uh, to measure the forward voltage of a blue LED. Now, some of the cheaper meters, such as these guys, I think this meter was about $80 and this meter was about $10, they will not source enough current to measure the forward voltage of um, even like a green LED. Okay, so lastly I'm going to do a quick accuracy comparison between these four meters. The Keithley multimeter is the most accurate meter here, so use that as the ground truth reference. For voltage, all the meters are connected in parallel to a 5 volt precision voltage reference. Now on to current. These measurements were all taken separately so that the meters wouldn't load each other. I've just used some video editing to make it appear as if they're all happening at the same time. Now here's resistance. And lastly, capacitance. Thanks for watching and I hope you found this video helpful. Make sure you stick around to check out the next video in this series.